Alright, so welcome back here to the third series which is rigging a game character. So we've done the modeling and texturing in the first two series and from this series onwards we're gonna start to do the other part of this Maya software which is to rig this character and to do animation. So this gets a bit more technical in a way um, compared to the more artistic part of Maya where we start to model and texture this guy so let's first talk about rigging right here on the top left hand corner you can see that before we were in the modeling tool set so we need to change to the rigging tool set this time and of course we get different options over here now because it's for beginners class so I don't want to confuse you guys so much so first things first is let's talk about joints alright so over here on the skeleton there's this thing called create joints alright so what are joints joints are actually bones alright think of them like bones for your characters so I have the join tool selected over here and I can actually draw out these joints over here and what happens as you can see it kind of looks like bones of the character and it draws out however I want it to so imagine this to be the shoulder and this maybe can be the elbow you can actually move it around and maybe this is the wrist so imagine if we put this setup onto our character's hands and then we can start to rotate him around and we can start to maybe push it up so for example if he's like putting his hand up saying hello to people or something like that so you no, know, and we can start to animate this later on Alright, so that's a basic understanding for you of what joints are. Now, of course, the joints, they need to be controlled by something. It would be quite annoying for you to always move some of these things one by one and you know, having to rotate them and stuff like that. So these joints, they actually need to be controlled by what we simply call controllers. Now, these controllers usually are things that cannot be rendered out so most of the time if I go back to my modeling tool set here most of the time all of these controllers are actually nerve surfaces which will be like a curve right so for example we can go ahead and create a simple curve over here so actually it's located over here so we go create a nerve primitive and perhaps a circle and right now here we have a circle object over here alright this is a curve and what we can actually do later on is to tell Maya that hey this curve is going to control perhaps the shoulder so we're gonna put it somewhere around here where it circles around the shoulder area and the idea is when we move this guy when we rotate this guy the shoulder joint will also move around now in order for us to do that to have this relationship between the controller which is the curve and join we need to do what is called a constraint operation now if you go back to rigging right here on the constraint as you can see there's very different types of constraint there's a constraint for scale orient parent etc now right off the bat let me just give a very very basic overview of what some of them do a parent constraint usually is when you want an object to move to the left let's say the controller moves to the left the other guy follows as well to the left so it only deals with movement all right which is the W key over here the movement this arrow over here and then we have right, I'm just gonna skip point for now I'm gonna have orient over here orient is mainly have to do with the rotation so just have a general thought that every time we talk about orient constraint usually has to do with rotation scale it expands itself so if let's say I have a master control over here and if I would scale up the whole thing everything else will also scale up and we have this thing called the pole vector usually we use this for our knee control which we would usually put somewhere over here probably create a box or something like that and that allows us to do some twisting around the knee so you can try to maybe twist your own knees and you, you can see how it looks like it, it kind of constrain itself a bit um, you can't really twist your knee 360 unless you're like in some alien character which this guy is but normal human being can't really twist their 
knee so much so we'll just twist it a bit over here and we use a pole vector for those all right so that's a basic overview of what rigging is about all right now the next part is we're going to actually start to create the bones for this character so we're going to start to build the bones build the hierarchy we're going to talk about how we can organize all of this thing everything to be organized in the outliner make sure it's neat and tidy and named properly and then we're gonna follow from there so we'll see you in the next part all right so we're gonna start to put in the bones for this character and before we begin we actually want to do some cleanup over here so if you go to our outline over here on the left hand side you see uh, some of these things are already named so if you have not named the uh, objects in your scene it's best for you to go and rename them and I have some things over here which is the eyes they, are, they have not been center pivot so I just want to make sure it's center pivot freeze transformation delete the history and here I have apparently just a redundant group so I'm going to get rid of the group what I have to do is I click the middle mouse button and push it out so I expand this, take the middle mouse button and drag it out right and these two groups can now be deleted alright so we can start to go ahead and put the bones for this guy so what I want to do first is to create a new shelf right uh, because previously in the previous series I have this modeling shelf over here so this time I'm gonna create a new shelf and I'm gonna call it rigging so all my rigging shortcuts is gonna be here uh, maybe I just put it as rig alright so I have a rigging shortcut over here and first things first I'm just gonna do some basic things whatever I have over here history center pivot freeze transformation and hide unselected objects and show all I'm gonna quickly put that up over here so let's go modify and look for our freeze transformation center pivot and then we're gonna delete by type history and I'm gonna go and display hide hide unselected objects and show all again if you've forgotten is actually control shift and click on this so that it will appear up here alright so first thing is make sure we go back to the rigging tab over here and I'm also going to start to create a join so under my skeleton there's this thing called create joints so I'm gonna put that in as well it will look like this icon over here now let's go from our front alright and you can start to create our first join now again I want to make sure that my whole model over here let me just group them as one center the pivot make sure it's right smack in the center right? you don't want it to be there you want it to be right smack in the center again press and hold X to snap it to the grid line now we use our join tool and we're gonna create a, a base alright so this will be a root so it's gonna control everything so that's one over here now just in case let me just undo this just in case if you feel that the size of this join is too big what you can do is you can go to display animation and then you go to join size and you can kind of decrease the size a bit if you feel it's too big right so we have one over there and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press enter and I'm gonna press and hold X to make sure it snaps there and then after that I can go ahead and control D um, there's a few ways you can do you can just select and just click all the way but I prefer to do it this way because I can see things more clearly so I'm gonna have one somewhere at the way so here is where it's going to expand out to the legs right and I'm gonna duplicate again it's gonna control somewhere around the lower back somewhere around the mid chest area this will control the clavicle towards to where you want to get the shoulder done so the collarbone area and then we have for the neck something for like the head and then it's going to expand forward for a mouth maybe and one last one for the skull right we can actually have another one for the eyes over here but probably want to do something different all right um we just have this one for now now if you look from the side um you can see that some of these things are not correct all right so we basically we just have to select our joints and move it to the correct position right 
so this would be the area where it's going to go up to the shoulders and the hands this will control the neck so this is the head and then we're going to have one out here for the jaw maybe two we'll see how and then we'll have one more here for the top of the head right here all right so that's it for now I mean, I'm not going to make it a very complicated rig uh, at most for the facial rig it's just going to be for the mouth maybe some things for the eyes uh, again this is just a beginner course just to get you started on rigging really so nothing too fanciful all right now next thing is we're going to go to the outliner and as you can see I have all of these joints over here by the way I can just go to my shading and click on x-ray to see the joints together with the model right so what I want to do is I want to start to parent them now again um, this is a bit of an unorthodox okay I forgot I had one more over here let me just go back here and move this guy uh, maybe I can put him up in front here so that you can you can have a bit of like a belly thing over here and, and you can animate the belly alright so I think I will have this guy in front over here so going back to our outliner what we want to do is we want to parent them and as I was saying earlier we can actually by right just select a joint and then start clicking it and it automatically has this hierarchy going on where this is the root and then followed by this guy and this guy and this guy and this guy right but I'm going the long way around and I'm going to show you this way instead so that you can start to see the hierarchy a bit more clearly so this is joint 2 and this is my root join so I'm just going to double click this and rename this as root right and then this would be let's say a belly join I know it sounds a bit funny but because he has a big fat belly so I'm going to put a belly join over there and this would be somewhere around perhaps a hip join hip not hop um, let's see join 4 would be perhaps I'll put it as a back join and this guy would be like a collarbone area so I'll call it um, maybe collarbone I guess I mean you can name it whatever name you want to as long as you understand what is what um, this would be the neck this guy would be start of the mouth so I'll probably put him as maybe mouth and then the other one would be like jaw and then this guy would be like the skull alright so we have renamed everybody and the idea is that the root has to be the parent and what we can do is we can select our belly and put it inside the root alright so as you can see once we did that there's this relationship happening over here alright now again we can put the hip inside let me expand this the hip will go inside the belly alright and then so on and so forth the back will go to the hip collarbone to the back neck to the collarbone mouth to the neck and skull to the mouth All right so the idea is that when I click on the root joint it will select everybody else if I click anywhere along the line it will follow through to whoever that is down the line alright so next thing is from this collarbone I'm going to expand it out to create one for the shoulder area, elbow, and wrist, and then perhaps one for like a palm, which will control for the five fingers that I have. Alright, so that's what we're gonna do next. 